today's the day. We finally got my ball hone in. I've got all my pieces to put this guy back together again. So I'm gonna start on it today. Now, that doesn't mean I'm gonna finish it today, but we're getting working on it today. And I'll show you the whole thing from now until it does get finished. Hopefully get most of it together today, probably not all of it. Finish it up when I can. <clears throat> I did get the ball hone in. And so I'll show you that. We're gonna hone this out, throw this used piston in there, cross your fingers, hope for the best. So there's what she looks like. Flexahone, made by Brush Research. They make bunches of these and all sorts of grits and all sorts of sizes for your honing needs. Um, yeah, this one's a 240 grit. It's a three and a half inch, I believe it was they said I needed so yeah there it is we're gonna lube this up we're gonna run this in there right like that it'll be a snug fit but hopefully it'll clean out all those burrs and scratches and everything else yeah, there's not really in burrs or just some scratching you can see some of the fine lines it's hard to see without a light but there's some fine lines on the back side the worst damage is on this front edge um, like I said, I'm just gonna hope for the best. I'll take you over here, show you. So this is my used piston here, and I'm actually using the bearings that the rod bearings that were in my old piston. Those of you guys that didn't see that, this is what happened to the old piston. Oh yeah, burned a hole right through the side of it right there through the ring land melted the top of it very bad but like i said it didn't do much damage to the cylinder itself and the engine was actually still running not even really making any noise other than that it ran on three cylinders so these are the bearings that came in my used one that i bought um you can see it's got a it's got a bit of a, a grooved area there you can't even feel that honestly but you know Obviously, I could get brand new bearings to throw in this. Um, that was the lower bearing. This was the upper bearing, which is actually starting to show some copper right there at the edges. I measured this out, mic this out. It's actually <clears throat> a couple thousandths um, under the nominal on, on these. This is the bearing that was in my engine. This is the top bearing here. And you can see a little discoloration on it right there, but it measures exactly the same. And then the bottom bearing that was in my one, I mean, it doesn't even look like it's been used and it's been in there for 200,000 miles. So I'm just reusing those. So that's where we're at with that. Got to get this ball hone set up over here, get some lube on it and run it in that cylinder. So we'll see. Okay. Well, I used my ball hone, and see if we can see in here, you know. Got pretty good hatching going on inside there. You can see some of the scratching, but you can't feel any of that. There is that area at the front of the cylinder wall. But you can feel that. It, I think it might just be stuck on aluminum from the other piston. I don't know, but I can't. A ball hole won't take it off, so we're just going to try. Um, I don't have a machine shop here. I don't have any way to bore this cylinder block out or this engine block out, you know, oversize it or do any of that. Um, so it'd be just as cheap for me to get one shipped from a junkyard because we don't have a junkyard. So as it would be for me to try and rebuild this. Either way, I got to take a trip to town which is a considerable feat considering where we're at. So, um, you know, it's just as easy for me to buy $80 piston rod off of eBay, throw it in there and hope for the best. Hope this thing runs, drives, lasts for another 100,000 miles. If it does that, I'm good. It's not that expensive a car, the car was free. So, um, if I can get it running and driving, I can sell it to somebody here or use it or whatever, I'll probably sell it. Um, somebody can get some life out of it for a while until it dies again. You know, it's the way it is. Just trying to keep these old things with life in them still, because it's a nice looking car, it really is. So 
uh, throw that piston down in there, bolt it up to the crank, and then we'll move on to uh, sticking the head gasket and whatnot on. Um, or maybe working on the head. There's some there's some slag on the valve that I want to take care of. So, well, here's the head. Clean that up. Fairly decent. You know, get all the little bits and pieces of head gasket material. The rest of that stuff is all just staining and stuff like that. You can't even really catch your nail on any of this stuff. Um, there was some buildup on top of that valve from the aluminum from that piston. Smooth that down as best I can. You can see there's a little bit of pitting in the top of that head there. Like I said, it's an experiment. We're gonna see how this works. But we got that all cleaned up. We got the head gasket ready to go in place. Pistons in the cylinder, slid in real nice, bolted it on, torqued it down, 22 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. On there, you are supposed to re-get uh, new rod bolts um, for those rods. I didn't bother to do that with those. I do have new head bolts because they do stretch and they are torqued quite heavily. So we're going to get the head gasket laid on there, set this head in place, and maybe torque things down. All right. I don't have a cameraman today, so um, I'm not going to be able to show you doing most of this stuff, but uh, we'll show you the progress. Okay, we got the head set in place. Um, one important thing to remember is this tensioner right down here slides on this shaft. I took the nut off the shaft and slid the tensioner off of the shaft as I pulled the head out that way. When you put the head back in here, if you left that shaft in place, I tried to take it out with a couple of jam nuts and I couldn't get it to come out of the head, so I left it there. So you have to kind of scoot the head down here so the shaft is just sticking through the hole so you have room to drop the tensioner down and then slide it on and then scoot the head the rest of the way over and set it on top of the alignment pins. Um, I dropped all my new bolts down in there. I have not started to tighten them up yet. Here's the case that my new head casket came in. This is a genuine um, part. You see the nice hologram sticker on there. This is a genuine Volkswagen part. I got this part along with most of my tools and stuff to do this job from idparts.com. Um, they're by no way paying me to say anything about them, but I just give them a shout out because they, they had really good parts um, for good prices and they shipped fast. Like, um, yeah, they shipped the same day. They shipped a priority mail. I got stuff in three days. It's, it's really good. So this comes with the sheet inside, which is in both German and English and French. And um, But at any rate, that's your... That's your tightening order right there. It shows you the tightening order. One, two in the middle, three, four, five, six, crisscrossing, heading out. It tells you your tightening, right? You're going to tighten them to 30 newton meters, then 60 newton meters, and then you're going to go 90 degrees and then 90 degrees. So that's the tightening order. I'm going to grab my torque wrench here, tighten this guy down. Then we'll be to the point of putting this cam pulley back on. I don't have my cam lock yet for the other side. That's something that was on back order. Um, so I may not go any farther than this right here. For now, I can put my fuel injector lines back on my fuel injectors. I can see I have all this capped off so I don't get crud in them. Um, and I've got the oil pan underneath that needs to get all put back up too. So, um, yeah, we've got some work ahead of us. I've only got a little bit left today. So I'll probably pick this up tomorrow. Um, with the continuation of putting the timing belt back on, putting the exhaust back on, which actually is just sitting back there. I did not take the turbocharger off this time. I just unbolted it and slid it away. So exhaust back on, intake back on. I got all new hardware for the intake. Um, IDparts.com has a head gasket installation kit. Comes with the gasket, comes with the bolts, comes with all the seals for everything. It's got new exhaust manifold, intake manifold, all these seals for your EGT housing and cooler and all that. And on the other end, where you got your water housing down here that comes in, you've got new seals for this, new seals for your vacuum pump. They just, they've, it's got all the parts and pieces. It's a really handy kit that they've put together. So, oh yeah, and I've got new glow plugs to go in it because those ones are shot. I knew that before I tore it apart. So let's continue. Okay, well, it's been a couple of days. I got this thing all back together. Some trial, some error. 
a um, little bit of difficulty with the timing. <clears throat> There's actually a really good write-up on the TDI forum for these on how to set that timing belt. Very simply, it makes it a lot easier to set it and have everything stay in place. Obviously, there's a cam lock that you get. There's a pin in this and <clears throat> high-pressure pump. I won't go through all of that because there's a really good write-up. I'll link it on this video, uh, the, the link to that write-up. Step-by-step, uh, real, makes it real easy to set this timing. Um, the basics of it are you leave this cam pulley loose and you loosen up the adjusters on this high pressure pump and then when you tighten your tensioner the high pressure pump moves the cam pulley moves but everything's locked in place the cam's not actually moving because the pulley's not tight on there so you, you take up your slack with your tensioner it, your pulleys are going to move a little bit every time you do that but if they're loose then you just tighten them back down once they're tight and then remove your locking pins and your locks and everything's set at zero so <laughs> unfortunately i don't have the uh, computer software to actually do the like final tune this should be set to within what they call the timing window it should run when i start it um you could tune it for better mileage and better economy and all that if you had the computer software you could plug into the car and you can actually adjust that pulley on your high pressure pump to get your injection timing perfect but i got this all put back together i put um some new glow plugs in there because before i had this apart I did figure out the glow plugs were shot, uh, which is one of the reasons it was so hard to start, aside from the fact that it had three cylinders that were working and not four. So we will see. Um, we've got the battery charging. It's been sitting a long time. The battery is fairly dead. I don't have the high pressure pump plugged in right now, right down there. That connector got to unplug so I can crank this a little bit, not get any fuel in the cylinders, and just build oil pressure, just crank it a bit. So. We're going to try that, and then I should have a first start on this thing since it got put back together, and we will see what happens. Uh, might have to bleed those high-pressure injector lines. You know, since I had the head off and those lines were open, <clears throat> there's likely a little fluid leaked out of them. You may have to bleed them, and that's not too big of a deal. Um, if you do have to bleed those, you just crack your lines just a tad at an injector, Crack one, crank the car, let the fluid flow out, shut it, crack the next one, crank it, um, get the air out of there. But I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I've seen it happen before on other diesels, so we'll see. It seems weak. What's next? Uh. Yeah. Air. Air in the fuel lines. I yeah, might have to that. crack those. How do you fix that? I might have to crack those. These and crack them? To, like crack the nut loose and bleed it hmm. a bit. Um, yeah. But that battery is pretty weak, so I think I'm just gonna wait till it's charged up more. So after much trial and error, uh, with the Jetta here finally got everything all put back together my timing that i set like i said i didn't have that cam holder um so i did get that because i, I was able to start it initially off my timing job um it ran real rough uh it didn't like to start without long cycling the glow plugs uh, a few other things so i got that cam holder put it back together or check the timing again static timing and turns out I was just a tiny bit, I was maybe a degree or two off on where everything was set. Adjusted that, started up much easier, and now um, it still had issues with stalling. I think that piston I threw in it probably doesn't have as high a compression as it should. I haven't tested it yet. So at idle, uh, when it's cold, smokes a lot. Once she gets hot, once she gets up and running, um, it's pretty good. It stalls every once in a while. When you come to a stop, when you make a turn, you know, just slow speed. When you're getting off the throttle and it's going to idle, it's it's stalling. So I don't know exactly. I've been messing around. I got the um, VCDS light software, which is good for up to 2005s. It's only 100 bucks. Does a lot of things. I've been playing around in the TDI bulletin boards, figuring out exactly what 
to just, um, I got idle speed cranked up as high as it can go to try and solve that issue. Um, and then I've been playing around with a few other things. Uh, but the timing, when I checked it with that VCDS software, which is one of the reasons I wanted it, was because um, it's got a timing graph on there and it can tell you if your timing's right. When I checked that timing, it was dead, like perfect, just at the upper end where you want it advanced a bit. It was really good. So uh, at least I know I can set static timing pretty much perfect um, with the uh, computer control timing. But I'll just I'll let you listen to her here for a second. It's uh, It's ready to go. Okay, here we are. There's that VCDS light right over there. She's been turned on. It is warm already, so. There it is. Success, right? We're gonna go over here and check the timing. We can go here. TDI timing right there. It jumps a bit, and I'm not quite sure why that is, but it's right in the range. So there it is. Starts, runs, drives, few little issues to work out on it, but um, a back door that doesn't open, and that's about it. I Sounds like there's a wheel bearing, maybe bad, I'm going to look at that, maybe do a video on that. Uh, but for the most part, this thing is ready to go, I'll put it up for sale, see if someone will pick it up. It'll be a good driver. Um, run a long time it's got a little bit of a wrap and it smokes a bit and you know it's a it's a beater but it's a good beater and it should run for quite a while it's only got 230,000 miles on it so should be good to go uh stick around i've got more projects in my driveway i've got a 93 i think it is ranger just came in the other day somebody's getting rid of it i need a transmission but when i look at the truck it's so nice uh i'm gonna, I'm gonna do i'm gonna Put the, the fix that thing up. Uh, I've got some parts for it. it. Doesn't need much, and it's in beautiful shape. It's got under hundred thousand miles on it. Um, looks really nice. So I might actually keep that one, sell one of my other ones, um, because I've still got this Jeep Grand Cherokee sitting out here that needs an engine. I got to get some coin for that. So um, I get rid of the Jetta. I get rid of another truck, and I should have the cash to buy a complete remand for that Jeep Grand Cherokee, which is a beautiful looking Jeep, um, and my daughter really wants to drive it. So <clears throat> stick around for that.